Hello, everyone. Glad to, to have you here. Um, I'll give it another minute or so before we start. In the meantime, welcome. Uh, my name is Johan Boerta. Uh, I call myself a change provocateur. Um, and in the last 10 years, I've really been diligently and uh, enthusiastically working to help customers um, be better and uh, to become more agile. And here I mean agile with a small a, not big A, although we often use agile methods. And the last four or five years um, is um, I pretty much spent uh, on the topic of uh, digital transformation. So um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about Agile and digital transformation. Um, so if I, from the comments uh, on wherever you're watching, whether it's YouTube or uh, LinkedIn, uh, can just have a, a shout out saying, yes, we hear you loud and clearly, um, because I cannot hear myself. Okay, uh, Johan has just joined us to the stream. Um, hello and welcome. Hi. So um, everybody, uh, uh, Johan is, is, is one of the wonderful people that actually brings us Access Agile, an uh, awesome initiative. Uh, we, people like myself, has got the opportunity to share what we've learned um with others um, and i think the important thing is freely um and um, it's a wonderful community that you've created thank you very much for that and thanks for the opportunity to be part of it you are absolutely more than welcome thank you so much for coming along and doing this amazing presentation for us i'm very much looking forward to it awesome so um i've i've in the interim started introducing myself <laughs> at a high level sorry <laughs> if if anybody wants to know more they can go to my linkedin profile <laughs> um so i think without any further ado uh, i've got quite a lot that i actually want to get through today so um so let me get cracking um uh, Jan, you can you can see the the uh, the comments panel, yes, on 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 the side of your screen. Yes, so, I can. Um, and um, so, as you post questions from either LinkedIn or from uh, from uh, Facebook or from from um, YouTube, we can see them. So, what I'm going to try and do is leave enough time at the end of the presentation to actually come back to some of these questions. Um, I'm not going to keep my eye on it as I talk, um, but luckily I've got a backup. Thank you. Okay, awesome. Um, so the, the title today is Digital Transformation, an easy way to get it right for incumbent industrial age organizations. And I think that last little bit is actually important because what we try to do is we try to find a way to help organizations, that's established organizations that employ a lot of people, um, that's got a huge community dependent on them to be able to become better and more appropriate for the digital age. But I think before we actually uh, start zooming into that, um, Maybe we just need to define what we mean by business agility and what we mean by digital transformation. Now, remember, I'm not saying this is the definition. This is my definition. Um, and you don't have to agree with it. But when we talk about it, this is what we mean. So we see business agility as a set of organizational capabilities, but also very importantly, behaviors and ways of work that helps an organization <clears throat> to be able to get things done 
those things specifically focusing on their purpose in a flexible and relatively free uh, way, but while we still creating or thinking about stability and resilience and so forth. Um, so agile organizations must be able to quickly respond to changes within the customer requirements, within the markets, um, within uh, technology platforms, and be able to leverage these opportunities um, so, you know, new things that happen is not always bad. You know, every, every new thing that happens is actually an opportunity. <clears throat> and digital transformation is the ability for the organization to add value to organizations by redefining their products and their services. And for the remainder of this presentation, I'm just going to talk about products. Please note that when I say the word product, I mean service also. Um, and often change the way they do things um, in response to the opportunities you know that these changes bring um, and and very importantly is is leveraging the social change that goes along with uh, the ability for technology to allow us to do things that we maybe couldn't do before um, so really, it's about creating business solutions that's more um, digitally enabled um, and focused on the way that society is busy changing as a result of of, uh, of technology to a large extent. And I think if you if you're able to bring all of these elements together, you cannot but win in a digital age. Um, so there's something very important that I need to say up front, though, you know, especially around digital transformation. It's it's be, the, the term has become a little bit trite, you know, because everybody is transforming. Um, but when we talk about digital transformation, we don't mean just another IT project. Um, so it's more than that. It is really uh, changing the essence of what we do and sometimes even who we are. Um, in responses to the changes that we experience within within the community. Um, so I quite like this, this definition from Tim Woodhouse from uh, MIT. He said, digital transformation is about creating beautiful butterflies. It's not about creating fast caterpillars. Um, and that sums it up so beautifully for me. You know, and so if it's not about fast caterpillars, then I reckon close to 80% of uh, initiatives that's been branded as digital transformation today um, is most probably not really that transformative. I mean, the mere fact that we say it's a it's an initiative um, yeah, gives gives me the willies. And I'm not saying the the eighty percent of the remaining initiatives, which I would term digitization, um, is not a good idea. Uh, they clearly have benefit, but Digitize, or the benefits of digitization tends to be short and medium term. Uh, it really doesn't talk about the long-term sustainability of the organization. So it's that remainder, that 20% that um, that's really an enabler for the organization to survive long-term. Uh, and uh, that we would, I would at least, uh, term real digital transformation. Yeah. Now, some of you may know I'm one of the lead authors of um, a, a work called uh, Verisome Unwrapped and Applied, uh, and it's a service management approach for, for the digital age. And, and the book was intended to be sort of a how-to guide in terms of digital transformation. And uh, it is uh, quite a, a lengthy vol volume. Um, and really, our idea with this book was we wanted to give some guidance to people on this journey, on, 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 on be making a better organization. But you know, as we started talking to, to people, or maybe I shouldn't say we, because I don't know what Claire and, and Suzanne's experience is, but certainly this was mine. As I started talking to people, they say, wonderful, this is some really great guidance. Yeah, I've learned a lot, but can you give me a template? Can you make it simple? And 
you know, at first I was going simple and transformation. I mean, really, th this is an oxymoron. How the hell am I going to do this? Um, what we really intended to do was to help people have a better understanding of, of what's involved in, in, in transformation. And then about two and a half years ago, the penny dropped. Um, and I replaced simple with the word agile. And voila, there you go. Agile digital transformation. Uh, we just call it ADAPT for short. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that journey in the last three years, two and a half, three years. Um, up to this point where um, ADAPT is something that can be used by everybody. And incidentally, um, you're most welcome to join the ADAPT LinkedIn group. Um, as we write stuff, we publish it there. You can go to my uh, Medium profile also. Same articles will appear, appear there. Um, it's really our passion to help people to be able to do meaningful transformation, and it's available for free. Um, okay, so 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 what is all of this thing about? Yeah, um, yeah. Last week on a on a podcast, uh, somebody asked me, "What's the difference between agile and continual improvement?" And I said to them, "You know, for me, the the." The question should rather be, what's the difference between project management and Agile? Because Agile is continual improvement. Um, it is, if you work agilely, then it means that you, you work in an iterative fashion. You, you think about um, learning as you go along. You know, it says based on these principles of empiricism. Um, and it's a based, uh, based on the fact that we keep on learning. So, you know, when we defined this, this um, method, yeah, because people wanted to prescribe by step one, two, three, yeah, we said, okay, these are the things that we must make sure is part of the package. Um, re revolutionary change is always difficult, but evolutionary change tends to stick. Um, whatever we do must involve all stakeholders. Um, there shouldn't be any grand attempts to change everything at once. The, 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 the principle of working empirical and, imper uh, and, and iterative uh, clearly needed to be part of it, otherwise it's not agile. And then something that I quite often see in initiatives is... <laughs> You know, don't change stuff for the sake of changing it. If, if it works, don't change it. Uh, and I'm not saying leave it alone. You can always make it better. Um, but these were really sort of the, the high-level principles that, that everything that followed in the last two and a half to three years was basically based on. And what we came up with is a journey, a very simple journey. It consists of three themes or phases if you want to, and nine steps. And if any organization do these things, they will successfully transform their business. Caution though, this is not a project. Now, that's one of the differences between agile and a project. A project has got a beginning and an end. That's why Agile is more like continual improvement. This has got no end. The moment you get to step nine, you start with step one again. Yeah. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and very quickly, at a very high level, take you through these nine steps. Um, so unfortunately, you know, in 30 minutes time, I'm not going to have the time to go deep into everything. So I can talk about what and why. Um, if you want to know more, you know, the presentation will be available uh, afterwards. You can look at the video. Go to the LinkedIn group, uh, the ADAPT LinkedIn group, um, and you can also go to, as I said, to my Medium page, and you'll find a ton of resources there. Constantly, we keep on publishing articles and advice and yeah, interesting things there. Um, so if we say the journey is iterative, 
uh, it sort of means that, you know, you go from extract to explore to expand. So extract is sort of focusing on strategy. Um, I suppose one can say that explore is about tactics, but it's really focusing on, on innovation. Yeah? And expand focuses then on making that idea or those ideas, the, the, the tactics, making it practical and operational and workable and, and actually adding value. So the intent is that you go through the cycle once every three months. So you should be able to review and revise your strategy four times a year, at least. Uh, gone are the days that strategy can be done once a year. Yeah, it's, a strategy is a is a activity that must be part of the day-to-day -day management of an organization if you want to be successful. Uh, we will continually improve our products and services. And if you want to use an agile math method for that, great. That's what we do. Um, you will regularly update your business model. And I'll explain a little bit later when you're going to do that, because you don't want to do that all of the time. You only do it when it's necessary. But at least you'll, you'll have a point of actually saying, should I, once every three months. And then you will constantly look at developing new and innovative ideas once again using some form of an agile method you know if you want to use design sprints we talk about three or four different methods that we typically use doing that um now just bear in mind not all ideas are good ideas <laughs> and not all good ideas are commercial ideas so you're going to obviously go through the the explore cycle quite a few times before there's something to hand over and make real within expand um okay so let's quickly look at the steps will win uh will win tour well that's a difficult thing for a dutchman to say um step number one unless you know who you are and what you're there to do nothing else is going to work we shy away from principles like defining yeah, visions and missions and all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah, the, the, the best way to focus effort in an organization is really to understand what your purpose is. And then based on your purpose, define actionable aims to get you to your purpose. Sometimes in between, we also define what we would call causes. Yeah interim things that we find is that they are important for us to do and that we want to achieve. But really defining your true north is where it all begins. The next step is then to say, since this is based on innovation, what is going to drive the innovation? Yeah, Am I just going to sit around and come up with a bunch of ideas and try all of them? That's a bit silly. So yeah, what you really need to do is because we say the approach is customer focused, is you need to have an intimate understanding of your customer, their needs, and specifically the jobs you help the customer to do. Um, and to do that, you actually also need to understand your, your, your products and your services intimately because you need to understand how they support. What's the matchup, the link between yeah, the customer's job and the the tool that you offer to enable them to do that. Um, and one of the ways that we do this is we create what we call product or service boards. Um, and I'll show you what one looks like in a few slides. Um, and that, that's a really a, a simple way of actually capturing information about um, your product and your service and how it supports your customer and enable them to achieve their objectives. Yeah. And once we've done that, then we can bring all of the stuff collect, uh, co together collectively and we can create a portfolio. We've obviously got our way of doing it, um, but you can, you can use any portfolio technique to do that. Um, and based on your strategy, so on step one, the true north, um, and what you've learned in terms of your innovation drivers, you can then say, for the next three months, we will focus on these products or services. Um, 
this is where we're going to start, you know, and, and this is what the journey is going to look like. So we can say, basically, in choose your investments, the end result of that would be that you have a, a defined digital transformation journey, at least then for the next three months. Next, we go over to Explore. Uh, Explore is really about you know, asking the question, how are we going to get this right? Um, and the, the way that we approach this is to say, the best way to do it is to innovate. But innovation doesn't start mid-air somewhere. So it's really important that you lay proper foundations for your innovation initiatives uh, so that they can bear fruit. So step four is build those foundations. You need to know and understand, first of all, that not all types of in innovation is the same. You need to know when to use what um, so that you've got the biggest chance to succeed. Um, and some of these types of innovation, you ju really, you just can't do it in operations. Um, so if you want it to succeed, you need to create some sort, sort of a safe space, yeah, um, where, uh, where innovation is protected and nurtured and can grow before you're exposed it to um, the organization's immune system. So, and, and part of this process or step is, is then to also define what is your innovation processes, your structures, how you're going to involve people, where you're going to get the resources from, all of those things. So important to actually lay the groundwork, make sure that the foundations are in place. Step number five is really focusing on innovation. So we say out-compete out or out-innovate the, the, um, the competition. Um, so what we do here, based on the things that we've selected in step four that you need to do in the next three or three months, you know, so the next quarter, um, identify what those initiatives are, identify what the right methods are to innovate, yeah, and basically get cracking. Yeah, make sure that you use the right innovation criteria, test criteria, because what you want at the end of this phase is you want something that is workable. Um, just bear in mind, in step five, we solve problems. We don't build the full solution. Yeah? So very importantly that in, in an innovation context that you separate the, the problem space from the uh, solution space. Um, because otherwise, we just keep on doing what we did before. Yeah? Um, but you need to validate that you're solving the problem in a manner that is workable and sustainable and commercial. Yeah. So testing and validation is part of that. The next step is now you need to go and look at the way that you do things currently in your organization. Look at your business model. Look at your systems. Look at your processes. Look at your controls. Because all of these things are put in place to protect the organization from foreign ideas and bad things that can happen. The problem is that also means that it rejects good things that can happen. So if you want innovation to succeed, what you need to do is you need to create um, an environment where you can actually take something into your operational environment and it will work. Um, and the way that we do that is by revisiting and re-evaluating the business model and making sure that we remove barriers in the business model and the subsequent systems, so systems, processes, controls, and so forth, that can stop the innovation from working. Um, so really what we want to do with this step is we want the innovative idea or the way that you've solved the problem, we want to give it a fair chance so that it will succeed. Um, and if you start with your business model, the likelihood is that it would cascade down into the rest of the organization. In the first few iterations, it's a little bit harder work, though, um, I must admit. Okay, step number seven. So now we're in, in to expand. We Now it's about making things real. Um, take the idea. You know that you've solved the problem. So now we move from the problem space to the solution space. And go and build this thing and make it work. Yeah. 
And here we definitely suggest that you use an agile method to do it. We use Scrum most of the time. Sometimes you, we use DSDM. Um, whatever spins your motor, if it works for you, go for it. But the idea here is to go and take this innovative idea and do something that is more than just a minimum viable product. Um, there's this idea of minimal marketable products. So you must be able to create something that is sellable, you know, that, the, that the customers would want. And the best way to check whether they would want it is to make sure that you enable the jobs that they've got for your product or service. Yeah? So if you get their job done, if you help them to achieve the outcome, you know, they will most probably go for it and, and use your product and service. The next step then is to, to make sure that this thing that you've built is now made real. So you need to get it into the hands of, of customers and users. Um, and once again, do it as, as agilely as you can. Yeah? Um, and, and the best way to do that is to also work iteratively. Um, so our advice is you start small and then you go big. So you, you scale systematically. And as you see things work, you scale more and faster and more and faster. Step nine is really about then cementing all of this stuff. So it's about uh, creating scale and capability within the operational context so that all of this wonderful work that you've done thus far works it keeps on working and it works well so the last step focuses on maintenance it focuses on continual improvement of your your operational in, uh, uh, operational environment but very importantly that lean principle of the ondon is something that we really stress with our customers in, and to say yeah if something goes wrong fix the problem there and then don't say i'll fix it later you won't yeah so Key to this is really you know, to focus on this issue of, of, of fixing operational problems and, and, and addressing the root cause and getting it done. Um, standardize work um, as much as you can and then automate. Uh, so that leaves people to focus on cool things to do, like innovating and solving problems. Yeah. So I said a half an hour, so I've literally got a minute left. Um, I would have loved to take you into at least one of these steps, but um, I'm just going to quickly fly through it. One of the most important steps is this issue of innovation drivers, because that determines what you can and what you should do. Um, so really important is it gives you your why. Uh, you know, why it is that you need to go and do and, and the way to do it is you plot all of your products and services against the product life cycle, because that helps you to understand what it is that you need to do next. There's a bunch of tools that you can use. You know, when we do it practically, it looks something like this. So every product is plotted on the life cycle and every color means a different type of response. Um, we then collect information about products and we fill it into product boards. Product boards, it's not our ideas. It's based on uh, the work of Roman Pinchler. Um, we don't use it the way he does, though. Uh, I've showed it to him. He doesn't like what we've done with it. Um, but we've got good reasons for actually doing some additional stuff. The colors is important because it helps you to be able to create um, groups of products within your environment. And later, when you think about your, your business model, the information that you've collected about products actually helps you to to, uh, to update your business model canvas. We've changed the business model canvas slightly. We call it the innovation canvas, okay? And then you need to go and you know, see what you're going to do. We recommend that you spend money in all types of innovation, you know, so disruption, potential, sustaining, and efficiency, um, and then that you stop doing certain things, yeah? So we would spend 20% of the funding on each, but you say, well, how can you spend 20% on a banding thing? That's not what we mean. Actually, disruption is two uh, categories. Um, so the, the blue bit will actually be 40%. Um, no one understand that the event horizons are different for these types of uh, innovation. You must use different met success metrics. 
Um, and um, it's really important to understand this stuff. Most people tell us we don't have money to do this. Our simple answer is get the money. How do I get it? I free up cash by doing stuff on the right hand of the screen to fund things on the left hand of the screen. How do I free up that cash? I stop offering products and services that adds no value. We solve root causes as they occur and we pay off technical debt. That frees up money very, very quickly. So it's actually easy. You must just start. Um, are there any questions? I uh, don't seem to see anything on the panel. Uh, Jane, is there anything that anybody wants answering? I think I've went at such a pace. <laughs> People just didn't have the chance to, to think. Um, okay, if no questions, then what I would like to ask you is, uh, we're going to share the presentation, obviously. Um, if you've got any other questions and you think about things later, um, contact me. There's my contact detail, medium page, email address, LinkedIn profile, YouTube channel where you can re-watch this video. Um, and then there's a very, very exciting uh, uh, thing that I just quickly want to mention to you. The book that deals with all of this stuff that I'm talking about is being launched either the 27th or the 28th of October this year. Keep your eye on the Adapt LinkedIn uh, group uh, because there we will tell you when it will be available and how you can get it. Thank you very much for being an awesome audience. Thank you for the opportunity, Access Agile, uh, to be able to share some ideas with, with uh, the audience. Thank you for being here. Um, and I really hope that you enjoyed the rest of the festival. Also, there were really some awesome speakers and some awesome ideas. That just leaves me to say sorry for running three minutes over. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and I'd like to talk to all of you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Thank you.